Okay, I'm going to set all this up. And yeah, I like to use these things for space games. I've actually got an idea for a star we'll do in a second. Um, this is still my basic rundown. Let's say velocity of 0.25, maximum velocity of 0.5. Uh, we want a max lifetime of two. And let's have a lot more of these. Let's say 64 particles. That looks like a flame. Exactly what we're going for. Now, it's got quite a lot of detail. The right, the, this fire image we're using is quite rough and ready. Um, we could use a much smoother image, let's say the circle, which will give us a much more stylized effect. Um, and if we go over to our scale, we could decide exactly how this shape looks. So we could say, you're gonna start a bit bigger, get right click here to remove this point. And let's say something like that. Now, by the way, it's starting to look a bit weird because I've got this explode this explosive thing off. If I turn that off, this will suddenly become a lot more uh, stable, right? One more trick we can do if we want to make this look like fire: scroll down the bottom of our process materials, and we can enable oh, turbulence. That's, nice. So that's a bit like a bit of wind blowing on it. Now this is too much, or right? a lot this of wind. Yeah, much. we can play with that. <laughs> Let's say noise strength of 0.25. Uh, Ryan here says he was thinking of a steam locomotive. Steam locomotive would work very well. Uh, and we could change the colors, right? So we have this um, going from pink to red, but we could go from... Ooh. Uh, 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 to... Let's make a nice, like, what is that, methane flame? Copper? Copper, Copper and lithium? Be. Some sort of mix. I don't know. It's been a long time since chemistry. Let's right. do it as a one second thing. You know what we need to do? Um, yeah, we need to go around setting fire to more stuff to work out what. Uh, what we just play more projects on board. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> and there we go. We have ourselves a little fire. I like all right. That. So this is all very basic. Let's try making some things. Now, someone mentioned a, a, a sun, right? Like a pulsing sun. Let's make one. So. Brand new GPU particle. And let's just do the whole thing again. So we're just going to get process material. I'm not doing a shader because I'm not smart enough to write shader code. Uh, new pass. It's quad mesh. And let's just remind us of what we do. So click on that. New material. Standard material. And here we go. Transparency goes to alpha. Blend mode is going to be add. Shading is going to be unshaded. Vertex color is going to be albedo. I've done this a lot. This will become like second nature. Don't worry. <laughs> um, what else are we going to do? Billboard mode. I always forget this one. Particles with keep scale on. Okay. So what do we want? We want something that doesn't move. And we want a nice circle. Is this a good circle? They're all pretty good, aren't they? Actually, do I have... I think I made a circle with some details on it. I'm going to use this one. Okay. So, down to our material we go. Go to our Beto, and I'm going to bring in this energy hoop. And just to see what this looks like, let's just have one for now. So this is a single image that's not moving. It's being refreshed once every second. We may as well make a sprite. So, trick number one. It's going to come in from minus 60. No, that's wrong. Minus 180 to a maximum of 180. And let's set in our color ramp. What color would you like this? Purple. Okay. So I'm going to start <laughs> at a dark purple. And we're going to end at this light purple. I'm just going to drag this point over here, make a new point over there, and put in the alpha. And that's just to help smooth the transition between the where Precisely it is and right. where it isn't. Yeah. And we'll do the same with this one. So just move that over there. Copy that. Be aware, by the way, that adding a new color and changing the alpha, it's still going to head for those color values. So before it's completely faded out, if you change it from white to green, you will get a second where it tries to go green. 
Now that might be what you want. That can be a really cool effect. Like we can go to this pink and then fade out. Okay, so right now we have an hoop. Eh, it's not great. Um, let's put in a few more of these. Let's say there are eight of them. Okay, it's starting to look nice and sparkly. I'm actually changing my mind about this energy hoop. Let's find a, a circle that isn't perfect. That's a nice imperfect circle. What else we got? Here we go. That's what we want, this light one. Let's bring in this light. Ooh. Starting to look a bit more like a portal. Right. I love this. Um, you can make so many things out of just the same. And same, just playing same, with these things yeah. is great. Okay. Here's what we're going to use. We're going to use this one. Uh, I'm actually going to make the, 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 what's this, quad a little bit bigger. So let's say you are a two by two. Okay. So we are generating this image every second. We are fading it in and out just with the color, not with the scale. And we're doing it eight times. So it's it's overlapping. We're also adding, so if we had a lot more of these, it'd get a lot brighter. Let's stick with eight for now, just so we can see what we're doing. And let us add in a little bit of variation on the scale. So same thing as before. I'm just gonna go slightly up. and slightly down. That might actually be too much. What I might do is use this and use the Bezier handles to actually overscale it towards the end. It's one of the things, isn't it? When you, Whatever you're making, I mean, in this case, the particle, there's so much you can do in terms of just iterating again and again and again i presume at any point you can like duplicate it over in the um scene there and just mod and, and create a new one that you can just modify you can duplicate it if you duplicate it and modify it you'll duplicate them both because of the same process material you're making it okay, so if you're that doing case, that yeah. let's duplicate one move that over here what you're going to need to do is on your new one go to process material click on it and make unique and you'll probably want to do that with the, the pass as well. So make that unique. Now, when I change one, it'll change both because I did the wrong thing. Why did I do the wrong thing? Make unique. Pretty sure this works. Make it green. Oh, 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 I know what I'm doing. Pull ramp needs to be unique. There we go. Um, to get around what I just did, no, that's not it either. I mean, it is that, but I'm messing up. Let's go make sub resources unique. Okay, fine. Um, that should make every single sub resource of this unique. So let's just check if I'm right. All right, I'm not. It works. And uh, da, 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 da. Is the color ramp that needs to be unique? Is the first one just a copy of the second one at this point? Is that what's causing the problem? It's an instance of, not yeah. a copy of. That's the point I'm making, right? We're using the same materials. Um, it's often easier to start from scratch, but it, when you're duplicating something, if it has any sub resources, those sub resources are the same sub resource. Yeah. They're so not if you go and change of. the texture or anything else, the old one will also update. Right. Uh, so it's often easy to make a new one. Um, I don't really want to spend too much time bug fixing that, but that's where we're going. All right. Um, let's make this a little slower. So four seconds. Let's have 16 of them. Oh, here's a fun thing. I'm going to put this as a one shot. Now, let's say you're triggering this so that when a player does something or sees something, we just want this happening. Do you want it to fade up like this, or do you want it to just be happening? If you want it to just be happening, you need pre-process. So let's say pre-process, I'm going to say two seconds. Automatically calculate where would this have been after two seconds. And now when I press emitting, it's just there. This is really useful when 
for example, in the RPG project we're making, we have these large instance dungeons that have a lot of torches. And rather than grind everyone's computer to a halt, if you're out of range of the torch, it's just going to disappear. If you can't see, it's going to get cold. But that means when you turn a corner, the torches all suddenly turn on rather than you turn a corner and they're lit torches. To get around that, we use pre-process. So you turn the corner and the torches pretend they've been lit the whole time. 